Hello, welcome back to another video. Today we are testing out the new base product line from Make Beauty. So it's called their like skin mimetic diffusion line, which is supposed to mimic your skin and look very natural and skin like. So we will see if that lives up to the claim, see if it's worth your money, the whole shebang as I like to say. Before we start, if you're not already subscribed, I would love to have you. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It means the world to me. Thank you so much. And don't forget to leave a comment below. Uh, your thoughts, something random, how you're feeling, something you're eating right now. Let me know in the comments below. Before we get into the makeup today, I'm really excited to be working with Osea Malibu for a portion of today's video. So as the seasons have been changing, I find myself really wanting to up my body care routine to sort of prevent that like colder season skin dryness and just do like a little something extra to relax and you know you set the fall mood and you have some nice candles or some incense the lighting is dimmed if you're a bath person you're taking a bath from me it's usually resulting in a shower a nice warm steamy shower and then you know after you get out of the shower you just feel like you want a really nice moisturizer to seal in all of that goodness so i have a new one that has been my favorite for a while now actually but it's what i will be talking about in today's video this is their andaria algae body butter if you've never heard of osea malibu before they're a vegan cruelty free california based and very sustainably focused company who are also climate neutral what's not to love about all of those things and they truly make amazing body care products i've been talking about them for a long time now they're really like my leaders in body care if i think of body care products i always go to osea because they are top notch so this body butter is not completely new to me i have used several of these before so this is one of these staple body care products in my routine that i love using after a shower or just whenever my skin's feeling like a little bit dehydrated now, one of my favorite things about Osea products are they have this signature scent, which is one of the best things I've ever smelled. Like if my whole house could smell like this, it would be just fantastic. If you've never smelled any of their products before, so delicious and delightful. And what I really appreciate is because they do use natural ingredients, I personally react to most artificial fragrances. So to find a natural fragrance that smells really good and is actually very soothing on my specifically sensitive skin is just it's a gem so my first step in my routine is to actually use a dry brush this one is beautifully made it's wooden it has a really comfortable strap for your hand and these really nice bristles so i would recommend watching a dry brushing video i'm not an expert but i usually start on like my hands or my arms and i work upwards so this is a really great tool for lymphatic drainage i feel like this is especially helpful for me for my legs because I do have blood that pools in my legs especially when I shower so this is really nice to like get the blood moving and sort of prevent that from happening it's a really interesting body tool to add to your routine if you haven't tried anything like this before it's a really fun one to give a go and then I always follow up with a big nice dollop of the body butter and it really like locks in that moisture so your skin doesn't feel dry afterwards it's a beautiful product really a lovely body butter it's kind of nostalgic to me like i remember i used to use a lot of body butters from the body shop when i was younger and this scent i don't remember the name of it it might have been the satsuma scent from the body shop but it sort of has that same citrusy feel and it's nostalgic and cozy and homey to me it's also just a great skincare formula and i really like notice my skin it's always so glowy after I use those products and then sometimes I'll top it off with the Andaria body oil if I'm feeling a little bit extra. But yeah, really lovely additions, especially for my fall self-care routine. Osea also provided me with a discount code if you wanted to pick up this as like a little set to up your body care routine. I will have the coupon code right here on the screen. And of course, it'll also be in the description box below. So thank you again to Osea for working with me and I will see you in the next clip. All right, let's get into this new base collection from Make Beauty. I also have all the other products that I own from them, including their brow collection and a lip product and their new bronzers. 
So it's sort of like a full face of products from them and it's a really exciting like new brand. So Make Beauty actually first launched with skincare and it's kind of what made me fall in love with the brand. Um, one of my favorites is this cream from them, the Supercell Deep Moisture Cream. It's a very rich cream. It's also refillable. Their cleanser, their toner, like they actually just make incredible skincare. So when they started to come out with makeup naturally, I was very excited to try what they had in store because I really love their skincare. So they most recently launched um, some skin tints and concealers and powders all under sort of their diffusion base collection. <laughs> so let's just start with the Diffusion Dew Radiant Skin Tint. This is their packaging, very beautiful packaging. And then it comes in this very nice glass bottle, very sleek pull-off cap that comes with a pump. Feels very luxurious. So this is described as a next generation skin tint that features skin mimicking pigments that add radiant coverage while blurring, smoothing, and brightening. Sheer yet buildable, this lightweight product is formulated with added niacinamide and adenosine, adenosine to enhance skin for glowing healthy looking complexion so it's radiant coverage buildable smoothing brightening and a luminous finish it says to shake it apply a few pumps and blend it to skin using fingertips sponge or brush build coverage as desired and it looks like they have 12 shades here uh, looks like they do have a pretty good like balance in terms of the light, medium, and dark. It is a skin tint, so the 12 shades will most likely cover a lot of skin tones within sort of each product, but we'll swatch this one and see actually how light it is because I feel like that's sometimes an issue with these products that like supposed to suit many different skin tones is that they don't actually do that because like this one might be too dark for me and that might be the case for the medium or deeper shades as well. So the texture is very liquidy and this is the shade Fair One. The texture feels really nice so I think this is probably going to be the best match for me but I do have two other shades to swatch for you as well. So next we have Light 1.5. Looks like it might be a little bit warmer. Okay this one actually is, it's still very like peachy. I would say it's quite a peachy orange. It's quite a big shade jump. And then lastly, I have one which is Natural O2. This looks like it would be like a good self tan shade for me. It's like it has like a nice tan, warm, neutral undertone. Yeah, that one has like a very good undertone. Um, O2 is definitely peachy. And then the first one looks like neutral to me. I do wish maybe they had like another lighter shade with a different undertone because this might not suit all fair undertones in the fair 1.5. I feel like that's pretty dark for a fair shade. I would call that like a light shade in my opinion, but they are sheer skin tint. So they're going to sort of blend out to be a lot sheer than they're showing up on my hand. So we'll see how it goes on my face. So it said to shake vigorously. So I'm going to do that and then I'm gonna try this with my fingers and we'll see how that goes and pivot from there. A precursor to this, if you watch my channel already, hello all of you who are subscribed, thank you for subscribing. You know that I'm not a skin tint person on the daily basis usually. I like more medium coverage just because most of my redness is like the outer area of my face which is hard to sort of cover with such a sheer product but I'm going to get into the mind space of judging this as a skin tint and not as a foundation because I do use skin tints in like a much different way than I use my normal foundation. I have been testing this the past couple days. How I use skin tints is if I'm like going on a walk or something and I just have my sunscreen on and I want like a little bit of evenness to my skin but I don't want to put on a foundation so that's how I've been using it and how I incorporate it into my daily life. So again, I'm going to try to judge it as what it is and not what I want it to be because I tend to do that just because I love coverage. So I'm just going to start off with one pump and see where that gets us. It does have a slight scent. It kind of just smells like fresh, not in a scented way. It definitely doesn't smell like fragrance. It just smells like the ingredients, I would say. So it did say that it had niacinamide and then some other skincare ingredient, which is always nice for a skin tint. I am really liking the texture of this. It's not like one of those very thick, oily skin tints, but it's not a super thin gel one. It feels like a really nice in-between where you can kind of tell like it is a more moisturizing finish, um, but it doesn't feel super heavy, which is one of my big, like, I don't know what I would say 
pet peeves about skin tints is they like it's so little coverage but it feels so heavy maybe i just like don't have the right skin type for them this is looking good so far i don't know like how much coverage that really gave me i do feel like it looks a little bit more even and i'm just doing about like a half a pump to finish my forehead and then maybe we'll try to build this up a little bit i always like to go in with just like my whole hands and just like really work the product into the skin if i am using my hands all right taking a closer look here i think it looks really pretty i actually do like the texture of it there is a concealer which i'm excited about because i obviously want to add some more coverage um but i feel like it blended really well it did take a little bit to work into my skin but like i mentioned it doesn't feel too heavy yet and yeah i feel like my skin just looks like super healthy this is kind of exactly what this is kind of exactly what i want in the way that i use skin tints i'm going to take a little bit more and try to build it up just for the sake of testing so i'm just going to use a sponge here and actually if i'm using like a super liquidy product or skin tint like this i actually like to use a dry sponge because it actually i feel like i said actually i know that i did i said actually three times in that past sentence restart <laughs> When I'm using such a liquidy product like this, I like to go in with a dry sponge because it soaks up less product and usually gives me more coverage. Okay, I feel like that did build up a little bit. If you are going to use a sponge, I feel like you're just going to go through this product a lot quicker. Same with a brush. All right, I guess that did add a little bit more coverage. I'm not sure if it's necessarily worth using the extra product. It's like not much of a look difference in my opinion. But yeah, I'm really happy with the application. I'm going to move on to the concealer now. So the whole so the whole sort of theme of this base collection is that everything has skin mimicking pigments. So it's supposed to look very natural and skin-like. So this is the Skin Mimetic Concealer. It is described as, this concealer provides buildable medium coverage with a radiant finish, formulated with skin mimicking pigments, red algae, and again, that ando andonosine. It blends seamlessly into the skin to conceal it correct while hydrating. Ideal for spot coverage or layering over foundation, can also be used as a highlight or contour. It says to shake well, swipe or dab dofa applicator over the skin and blend using finger sponge or brush. Apply under the eyes to dark spots, redness, or any problem areas. It's interesting it says to shake it. It looks pretty thick in there though. So let's see how many shades we have. So they actually have 20 shades of the concealer up here, which I think is much better than the skin tint. And again, it looks like it's pretty balanced. Usually a lot of shade ranges tend to be like medium tone heavy. They have a lot of deep shades here. I will say it's probably a lot, but I will say it's probably lacking the most in the light range or at least these swatches like look a little bit dark. I will swatch them for you, um, but the skin didn't end up working for me, so I'm not mad at it. So the first shade we have here again is 01 Fair. So there we have the lightest shade. I would say this one has like a neutral warm undertone. And then we have 02 Fair N. So the first one is called N, which is neutral, but to me I would describe that as like a warmer neutral. Yeah, this is more of like a true neutral right in the middle there. That one's already too dark for me. And then we have three. Oh no, I actually have one to use as like a bronzer or contour. This is 13 Tan N. So there's that shade again called neutral. It looks a little bit warm to me though. So let's go in with the lightest shade here, which is Fair One. I am actually happy this has like this like yellowy undertone. I feel like that really helps with my redness. Let's start with blemishes and then move to the under eye i guess i'll try to do like a little bit on my cheeks as well to add the coverage where i want it i've like never been like that kind of like sheer foundation and then use concealer where i need it um because like i said earlier like all my redness is down here so to put a bunch of concealer here it's like i might as well use a foundation but I'm open to finding, you know, playing around, see if I can find some new techniques. This doesn't have a scent to it. This packaging, by the way, I forgot to even like show you what it looks like. So it has like this clear front here and then the name is on the other side. This feels very, very luxurious. It reminds me of Victoria Beckham. Like it has a really nice weight to it and like, you know, she looks nice. So I'm actually gonna use my dry sponge again. I wonder if this is one of those concealers that if you let it set, it'll have more coverage. We'll experiment. We'll let this like cheek area set. 
see if we get more coverage. This is looking very pretty. I do enjoy how it boosted the skin tint coverage. I do wish I had a lighter shade of both the skin tint and the concealer. I'm not sure which one I'm seeing right now, but there's sort of, you can just see like the demarcation line right there, whether it was the concealer or the skin tint or both. It's just not quite light enough for me. So with the little portion that I let sit on my cheek, I didn't notice like a huge difference in the coverage. Maybe I'll try that again with my under eyes. So I'll let one sit and blend one immediately. I do like the Dofa applicator. It picks up a really nice amount of product. If you have fair skin though, and you like a like neutral or cool toned concealer, I feel like you're kind of out of luck with this like concealer shade range because this is the lightest one and I would say it's like neutral warm and then the next one is like pretty dark in my opinion. That looks so pretty. I'm not like a huge fan of dewy concealers at all for my under eyes, but as long as it doesn't crease a ton, like I feel like it gave me very nice like light or medium coverage. It pairs well with the skin tint. I usually always do full coverage concealer with a skin tint because I'm like looking for that coverage and then I realize it looks weird, so. I like how they gave me like a full collection here to play with. Maybe this will be the skin tint that changes me to a skin tint girl. Okay, um, I'm not sure how long I should let this sit. I guess while that one's sitting, let me build this up a little bit more. Ooh, that was like nice and buildable. Sometimes these thin concealers will just not build. Okay, but I feel like this one's been sitting enough. Let's try blending it out. I also like to bring the extra right on the sides of my nose for that redness. Okay, so I do feel like I got a little bit of extra coverage on this side where I let it sit a little bit longer. So that might be the way to go if you want just a tad bit more coverage out of this. But it's very dewy and hydrating. If you have dry skin, I feel like you just love this line. And I will be wear testing it to see if it is oily, skin friendly. I don't know why I just started whispering that. <laughs> so there is the skin tint and concealer. I think all together it's giving me a really nice level of coverage. The next product I'm a little bit scared of, it is the pressed powder, which I love. I love pressed powders, but not for under my eyes and we will be trying it under my eyes just for testing sake. But this is the Diffusion Set Translucent Pressed Powder. So it says this ultra soft refillable translucent setting powder is formulated with microsphere powders and a mineral complex that sets foundation and concealer while absorbing excess oil for a smoother looking complexion. Biotech derived LG helps balance the complexion. Apply to any areas of the face you want to mattify or all over. Use brush and gently pat powder onto face to set foundation and concealer, nose, T-zone, and any other areas. And this one comes in five shades. Is a translucent powder, which I think is good for a translucent powder. I do have three shades again, just to show you. Here we have the lightest one, which is called Translucent Fair looks just like the skin tint. I think this, because it's a translucent powder, is gonna work for most people with a fair skin. And then we have the one in light medium, which is the second lightest shade. This one seems to just have a bit of a warmer undertone. Still pretty translucent, of course. And then we have the translucent tan, which is the third darkest. This actually could possibly be a bronzer for me. Uh, might be a little warm. I do have their bronzers to use anyway, but there's the translucent tan. This packaging is very pretty. So you get a gold, I mean a silver tone on the top and then it's gold on like the bottom half. So it's this two tone. Open it up and you get the powder. This is refillable as well with a very nice mirror in there. Makes me realize I'm very dewy right now and we need to set. And they also have a powder brush. So this is the powder brush. Again, it has that like gold handle. This feels really nice and like heavy. And I love the shape of this. It just seems like it would be like such a perfect density. For a powder brush, I love when it wiggles like that. That's how you know it's a good powder brush because it's nice and loose at the end. So it's not going to like pick up your foundation. So what I'm most worried about is using this under my eyes because I am a loose powder gal. I have a lot of problems with like creasing under my eyes, but we're gonna try it. So I am gonna smooth out the concealer before I set and I hope that doesn't like pick up too much product. It actually is a little bit. 
All right, I'm gonna use my sponge instead. I forgot to talk because I'm concentrating, but when I'm like setting a very dewy concealer, I make sure to get a lot of product on my brush or else it sort of like picks up. And this powder is pretty soft. You can kind of tell I'm getting some kickback when I'm dipping my brush in. I'm just gonna follow that along my smile lines and sides of my nose. Can see this deepened my face quite a lot, which is kind of the issue for me with a lot of translucent powders. Like it's fine, it's usually workable, but okay, staying with like the positives, it looks so smooth. I was not expecting that because pressed powders plus dewy concealers on my skin, usually a hot freaking mess, but I hope this actually like sets well though. Fingers crossed, let's do the other eye. I'm gonna do a little bit less on this eye, split test it. So it actually looks very nice and smoothing. Let's go ahead with the powder brush and start to set the rest of my face. Ooh, yeah, this brush is really nice. I am going to leave sort of like this section of my cheek unpowdered for that glow, but I will powder from that down because we will be using the powder bronzer too, so I don't want that to like stick to our skin tint. I like how this powder is giving me like a little bit of coverage as well, even though the shade, again, just too dark, but we blend that down, not too shabby. This powder definitely has a very smoothing look on the skin, which makes me very exciting. It's already creasing under my eyes a little bit. I kind of just knew this type of formula would. You will see how it holds up throughout the day, but like I really do enjoy like around my nose and like my pores and stuff and forehead look very smooth and nice. So let's move on to the last base product we have, which is their bronzer. So this is the Skin Mimetic Bronzer. This is a refillable micro suede matte bronzer that adds buildable, buildable warmth and definition for a naturally sun-kissed tan effect. Formulated with active multifunctional sensory powders infused with hydrating hyaluronic acid. It's like they're trying to make it a tongue twister, you know? And replenishing ceramides, this bronzer feels lightweight and silky smooth. Uh, I do have two shades to show you. This is the second lightest shade, I believe, which is Lunar. And then we have the lightest shade, which is, oh no. This one is the lightest shade, which is Lunar. And then we have Aura, which is the second lightest shade. Yeah, this one is Luna, and then this one is Aura. They look pretty similar. The only thing is I feel like these are a little bit warm for a bronzer than what I would go for. I think I'm actually gonna reuse the powder brush again just to see how this would work with the bronzer. So I'm gonna get some on my brush, but I'm gonna make sure it's very sort of not stuck to my brush. Not too much product is what I'm trying to say. So I think if you have a bronzer that's like pretty warm, definitely wanna go like very easy at first. This is a matte formula, which I think a really nice addition to such a dewy base collection sort of just balances out the look a little bit this is like nice and sheer and buildable when i'm using like a brush like this too because i actually really like the shade once it's on this is something that's already been in my collection for a little bit so i have been very much enjoying it i do wish they had like a lighter like more neutral like cooler type of bronze but like i still feel like this is very pretty and workable. Even though it's warmer than what I would usually go for, it does add like this nice bronziness and healthiness to the face. Went really well with the powder and the skin tint. I am a little bit worried about this powder. A little bit cakey. Uh, but let's move on to our next and almost final stuff from them. We have their brow collection, which is something I've been using for a while now and really enjoying. So first we have the Make Beauty Blade line, which is this nice, like it reminds me of the Kosas Brow Pop pencil shape, which I really like. This is Cool Taupe, which is a really nice shade. And then you get the fluffy spoolie on the other side. So let me go ahead and do my brows with this. This is nice and pigmented and the perfect consistency in my opinion. Shade could be like a little bit lighter or maybe I should use the blonde one. But especially if you're using this like over the skin tint, the additional moisture from the skin tint is gonna make it super creamy. So yeah, this is just super quick, easy, creamy, blendable. Love this brow pencil, nothing bad to say about it. And then they also have these brow gels, both a clear version and then a tinted version. The tinted version is Warm Taupe. This is the one of like the only tinted brow gels I actually like. 
because it's not like too pigmented or dark sometimes these like tinted brow gels are just like not they're like too pigmented and like creamy i would say and i like the more gel like brow gel and that's exactly what this is and i also have the clear one i'm actually going to take my powder brush just to set my eyebrows i do this trick a lot just to like lighten up the color if i feel like it's too dark and then today i'm just going to be using the clear one this one has a bit of a longer brush it does pick up a lot of product though so i like to sort of clean it off and then it grabs the brow hairs really nicely i just set them in like an upwards pattern here's a hack if you have a brow gel that you don't like preferably a clear one just use it to like tame your flyaways like i have a bunch right now but i have like an old brow mascara that i just like brush on and it's kind of just like hair gel in a bottle really interesting but yeah i do really enjoy these brow gels as well they are a bit on the wetter side more wet side so it's depending on what you like that's what i like personally but if you don't like that like very wet formula you might want to pass on these so let me just do my eyes really quick i think i'm just gonna use one of these bronzers as eyeshadow this is the deeper shade of the bronzer by the way the names i keep getting mixed mixed up this is lunar so i just did some like super basic eyeshadow and mascara because it's a skin tint we're doing like minimal makeup look how tiny my lime crime topist lip liner is getting this is my favorite lip liner and i'm just like i don't know what i'm gonna do when this is gone because it's like the only shade i found that is like this if you know a dupe please let me know i've been hunting it's like so it's this neutral shade right and I really like NYX Nude Beige, but that one's like a little bit more brown. And this has like this purpley hint to it. It's just so perfect. So the last product I have from them are their serum balms, which I freaking love. They're this very cushiony, like very moisturizing lip balm. This one is almost empty, but it's Halo Moon, which is basically just a sheer color. Let me see if I have a different one. So I also have this orangey shade called... Sun flare, which I know is just not gonna look good on me, but if you have like medium warmer skin, definitely would. And then this is lilac lavender, which is probably what I will use, which has this really nice, like berry tone. Like it just has this very thick doe foot. They're super juicy, and I like how they're more balmy because they actually stay on the lips. I don't like those very oily lip tints that just like get into your mouth. Like I really heavily dislike those. So I'm glad that they like made this formula that is nice and juicy but still stays on the lip. So I am really happy with how everything came out. It is 321 by the way. It is 321 so I will be wearing it for the rest of the night even though we got a little bit of a late start. I do like how everything looks so far. I think I just might have like used too much powder because like it's already sinking into my smile lines because those pressed powders they just tend to be thicker and they just are not super fine line friendly where i feel like a loose powder is thinner and it kind of like smooths everything out a bit better because the same with my under eyes they just look like a little bit more crepey looking than usual but the powder on the rest of my face looks really pretty like the skin tint went on really well and I do like the look of the bronzer. Um, my biggest con so far is just like the shade, which is very disappointing because I know a lot of you say that you're even fairer than me. So I don't think that this range is necessarily fair skin friendly. Like the bronzer isn't super light. The concealer, the lightest shade is like a yellow tone. So if you don't have like a yellow undertone, you don't like yellow concealers, that might be just a pass for you. And then same thing. I think the powder, it again could be a little bit lighter, like another like lighter shade, almost white. If I was personally making my own like baseline, I would definitely include like a very like brightening translucent powder. That's like a translucent powder, but almost has a white base. So it's brightening for people with very fair skin. And yeah, I would definitely expand with the concealers and the skin tint because you're kind of limited with the undertone of everything, which is disappointing, but I still made it work. Uh, even though the point of this is like to look very natural, it's just a little teeny bit off. I could probably blend it a little bit better. That's just me being nitpicky. 
but yeah i really enjoyed everything and i really hope that this ends up wearing well i will insert a little close-up of what it's looking like at the moment but i feel very fresh and dewy which is nice at the moment but i do have uh, normal to oily skin so we will see how sort of the t-zone ends up looking at the end of the night but uh, thank you for watching to this point. I would love to know your predictions in the comments below. Let me know if you think this is going to wear well. I might have done too much product to be honest. That's just my thing. I always end up using a lot of concealer because I love concealer. Maybe I will do another test and update you in the comments if this one doesn't end up wearing particularly well, but I will see you at the next check-in. All right, I am back with some very interesting wear updates 10 10 at night so i haven't had this on for super long but i feel like for a skin tint plenty of time for a wear for sure first things first this skin tint i actually noticed this when i was applying it but i thought i had like touched something with shimmer on it but this product has shimmer in it which is so interesting it's like a very fine shimmer so like I didn't really notice it on my face and looking at my face now I don't really notice it especially with the powder on top of it but as I was applying it with my hands like I did notice there's some shimmer in it um, which is interesting when they're going for like a skin like finish to have something that's shimmery but I guess it is sort of fine enough that I don't necessarily notice it on my face but that might be a little bit different in direct sunlight especially if you just don't like shimmer in your face products but I do feel like it adds to that nice glowy look so undecided about the shimmer but it's really interesting that that is in there and then just how the face is wearing overall i'm just uh, much more oily than i typically am especially in my forehead which i totally powdered and it just like i don't feel like the powder did that much oil controlling for me i think where i packed on a lot on the sides of my nose it did do a pretty good job at controlling oil there but in terms of my forehead where I used a more minimal amount and on my chin, it's really separating and just not doing any oil controlling. Um, yeah, so it is separating, looking very like textured, very sunken into my smile lines. And in terms of the concealer and powder combo, I'm not sure if it's one of these causing this or both together. I have a suspicion it is the powder because I just never find pressed powders that can work well with my under eyes. So it's very creased. You won't be able to tell probably on this camera, but I will insert a close up with my phone and you'll really be able to tell. I think especially on this eye where I actually used less of the powder um, or maybe it was this one where I used more. Yeah, it's just very creasy and like caked up and might have been my fault for using too much powder. Uh, I will continue to test these and I'll actually update you in the comments below before this is posted. Maybe I'll put it on the screen if I do figure it out before it's posted, but I will definitely have to test the concealer and powder on its own and then figure out if it's both that aren't working or it's just one or the other. But just like based off of this powder formula, really not my favorite type of formula, especially for under the eyes. It does have that thicker, like creamier texture which just tends to sink into my lines. It does look really pretty, um, both the skin tint and the powder and concealer on like the perimeters of my face and the bronzer. Like I think overall it looks fairly good. Um, if you have semi-oily to oily skin, I think this is just like a major pass. As with most skin tints, if you have oily skin, um, this might work with a more oil controlling powder. I'm definitely curious about that because I feel like the skin tint actually held up pretty well in terms of like not transferring and it looks like not cakey at all it looks very smooth and pretty just like this area looks cakey again might be the powder but since i have been testing the skin tint on its own for a little bit now i do think it's really pretty and it's definitely not cakey like it is right now with the powder so i'm guessing the powder is the culprit because this was really pretty on its own I would probably suggest like a thinner, more translucent powder if you are going to set it. It does look really nice on its own. I think this, if you want to be super glowy, this with like the e.l.f. Um, halo filter, very glowy. Maybe a little bit too glowy for my liking, but I think out of like all the skin tints I've tried, in terms of the formula and like how it's looking on my skin overall, this has got to be one of my favorites. I'm not a skin tint person, so this might be the one that I really enjoy. I wish I had a little bit more coverage. I know I'm being picky, it's a skin tint, but just like 
a little bit more, maybe more like tinted moisturizer like, but it did build a little bit. So still kind of a mystery on these products. I will definitely update you in the comments below. So be sure to check down there. But thank you for tuning in to this final wear test. I don't remember if I filmed an outro. So if I didn't, thank you all for watching and tuning in. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And that's about it. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.